Alrighty then. Today, we're going to be talking about scout planes. It's a popular question. People ask them this thing over and over again. Here is the scout plane with its ridiculous 200 days of base research time. In a perfect world, scout planes shouldn't be this independent tra uh, plane that's on the right side of the screen. It should be like one of these, like a carrier plane that takes half the time to research. These should be 100 day a piece. These, the fact that they cost, they're so expensive as well. Oh God, they're so expensive. They're expensive. They can't do normal missions. They require loads of aluminium. Question is, when do you make scout planes, eh? When do you make them? So the popular question people are always going to ask me is like, how many of these should I make? Are they worthwhile to make? What do they actually even do? These are all really good questions. So let's put a 50 air wing in here and deploy. We'll do no CB and we'll declare war on the Swiss. Neutrality foreign policy. Oof. So here we go. Let's pop these transport, these scout planes over the Alpine region and let's do their mission, which is Air Recon. Performs aerial scouting and intel gathering. If executed at night, this mission has a much lower chance of being detected, but it suffers a penalty to acquiring targets. So that's off they go. Oh yeah, that's another thing as well. You can even use scout planes at peacetime as well. A bit like agencies as well. So we'll research an agency. So you can use an agency at peacetime and you can also use, an agent, uh, use a scout plane in peacetime as well. So here we go, they're doing their missions right now and doing their scouting. And then if we right click on Switzerland, click on Il Intel Ledger and hover over either civilian, military or Air Force or Navy. You can see here air reconnaissance 1.88% and it is ticking up by 0.09 per day. I believe up to a maximum amount. I don't know what that is. So whereabouts would you use these? So you'd use them in conjunction to a spy network to get basically a 100% spy network, which if you can look at the list of things here, you can see the 70%, 80%, 90%, they all unlock something that you can see about the enemy. A lot of the time, if you played a lot of this game, you kind of already have an idea of what these numbers represent and what they even are. So you don't even need to know them. But by doing this, you will get access to that information. Let's do one against France. We'll pop them in Northern France. It's strange this, but you have access to their supply depots and railways without even building a spy network, which I think is a bit weird. But regardless, anyway, I'm going to build a spy network, an air reconnaissance mission in Northern France. And as we said before, you can actually do this at peace. Let's go into Intel and we'll go into Air Intel. Proximal air manpower, aircraft types, airport locations. So the 30% that is a biggie because you know the locations of their airports and you can't see that on the normal map. Now, if you play a lot of this game, you should automatically know where the airports are anyway. But it allows you to do a little bit of a cheeky strategy where you can paradrop on top of the air bases. And if it's a multiplayer game, that will cause all the planes to reshuffle all over the place and the players are going to have to do a lot of micro to reorganize that. So it is quite a powerful strategy to use. I believe so. If we get enough air reconnaissance, we should actually see the locations of the air bases. It is ticking up very slowly. Let's take it up more quicker by uh, increasing the amount of these. Realistically, if you ever want to make recon planes, scout planes, you just technically add one with one military factory. And over time, you'll just tick up the amount that you get. Let's have a look. Intel, you see it's ticking up by 0 0.53 per day now. I believe there is a maximum cap, but I don't even know what that number actually is. Can you imagine if there's like a thousand planes flying over France right now? Like the French should be a little bit like, oof, what's going on here? What's going on here then? So we're at 25% now and it's capped at 25%. 25% is the maximum you can get from recon planes. Oh, I suppose we can see the location of divisions. That's pretty good. I think you can do that with spy networks as well. So you can see the location of divisions. Now, this is important because if you ever want to do a paradrop onto certain victory points or airports, you need to know where the divisions are because you don't want to paradrop onto a location with one, uh, one battalion of uh, paratroopers to get them instantly killed. That's just a waste of time. So in this case, what we'll do now is build a spy network. So this will allow us to get even more intel on France. Actually, what we could do too is go for the Air Force Department because you get a plus 25% intel. So as you can see right now, we're boosting our intel network. It doesn't actually say anything about planes, does it? Let's have a look. Adjacent states, own operatives, base cap, own operatives, evasion speed now. So what I think is the intel modifiers are factored by 0.2% because of the aircraft department. So therefore we have more inf information. Okay, so this is where we've got some groundbreaking information now. We can see their airports and we can actually have an estimate of how many planes are based on those airports. So I understand I don't play multiplayer, but let's just say you want to be a hardcore multiplayer metagamer. What you would do here is if you were to declare war on France, you'd actually get 
paratroopers to drop on all the airports that are near the front line. Now, you're probably saying with France, you probably just want to be aiming for the victory points to capitulate. Yeah, sure. I, just a strategy I wanted to bring up. I guess if you did it against Poland, for instance, you could completely disable their air force. And you could do the same with the Soviet Union too, with the initial conquest. So therefore, you can capture air bases, therefore disable their air force. It's just a viable strategy. And it allows you to do that with air recon. It allows you to do that. It's an option now. You get max intel at 90% anyway, so there's no point going above 90%. 90%. 80%, 80%. I suppose in a way, if you were going to be really hardcore multiplayer gamer and you wanted to like know everything the enemy's up to, I suppose metagaming this by maxing out to 100% lets you know exactly what they're up to and what they're doing. But you think about it, it's quite a big investment, isn't it? So you've got to think to yourself, is it even worth it? Do scout planes help with reconnaissance for land battles like scout cars? My understanding is no. But once again, I'm looking for a tool tip to tell me that. Try it out. There's no way I'd be able to interpret what I'm looking at as a bonus. I don't. I wouldn't know. I need a tooltip to tell me. Are scout planes that bad? Th th there are problems with them that, that it could be fixed. I'll go through that a little bit later. Do a Hoi 4 10 with infantry only game? Haven't I done that like last week? Bro, do you even watch my YouTube channel? You've insulted me. Just going to build the spy network up all the way. All right, so here we go. So full spy network as with reconnaissance planes as well. So it looks like all it does is increases your total level of intelligence to a further level. So if you max out your spy networks, you're at about 25%, but then you max out the air recon, you get an extra 20% on top of that, plus all the other modifiers. So you can potentially get a lot, lot higher when it comes down to getting on that recon game, I guess. And there's a hidden bonus as well. When you go into combat, there's an intel advantage. And you say the intel advantage here is 8% because we have more intelligence than they do. So if you're looking for an easy bonus to get an extra firepower against your opponent, you could just stack lots of intelligence on their nation. The only problem is now that I guess my scout planes could potentially get shot down, I suppose. I suppose that's why you don't want to overly invest into it. It's basically a plane that can't fight. It's a shame you can't convert your existing fighters to scouts. That would make it more worthwhile, wouldn't it? As far as I'm aware, scout planes on oceans, all they do is increase detection like there are any other plane as well. So it doesn't really add you any extra big reason to actually want to go for it. So it's it, to me, it seems pointless. So just to summarize, as far as I'm aware, scout planes increase your maximum threshold for intelligence even higher than you can go before. So there's two powers with spy agencies trying to get an intel advantage. If you've got scout recon planes, scout planes, you can get basically that higher threshold for intel. So therefore, when you're in battles, you can get a higher intel advantage. In this case, 10.9%. 10% extra attack bonus. It's big. It's big. 10% is a lot of intel advantage. It's not something that can be just ignored. By developing dedicated planes for aerial surveillance and long range reconnaissance, we ensure that we can gain and maintain an accurate picture of our opponent's intentions and capabilities. The, the, one of the reasons why they're not very good is what I've just described to you probably sounds really cool and like, oh, wow, I really want to make them now. But the problem with these scout planes is that they're a separate research. They cost 200 days a piece for each one of these research. That's 400 days total occupying a research slot. If, in a perfect world, scout planes should be a part of the fighters. And there should be like an extra button here that like takes only 100 days instead of the full 200. This idea that you have to branch out and research on a separate path is just really frustrating. And I think for the most part, guys, because of their lack of flexibility and a dedicated plane that you have to produce separately and you can't convert them and you have to dedicately research it, they're just not worth making. Scout 1 is kind of worth it, but Scout 2 is really not worth it. So if we were to max out our intelligence on, let's say, the Swiss, and then we get the intel advantage... 9%. And then we're going to gain more intelligence now based on scouting. So we can go to a higher cap. So it's only 9% because you have to gain more of it over time. They are cheap. Yeah, they are cheap. But you have to dedicate some of your production to it. I think the only way I can make it viable is you research the first one immediately. The scout one. And you put 1 mil on it for the, for the whole game. That's the only way I can rationalize it in my head. Could they be viable for C? As far as is where, as I can see from the stats... It doesn't seem to make an impact at sea other than just providing one air superiority for extra spotting potential. But that works with regular fighters anyway, so you don't need to do that. Once again, I'm up to the idea of someone telling me I'm wrong about this. Like there's some hidden stat that I'm not aware of. But at the moment, I can't see what it is. So I don't know what how I'm meant to use those numbers. You know what I mean? So let's refer to the wiki. The wiki. Scout planes. Scout mission. So it increases the maximum hard cap, which what I just explained just then. Gather the intel based on industry air in the country. The scout planes can be signed to any air zone. Build up intel bonus over time. The more planes you fly over the state, the faster you can reach the maximum. How quickly you build intel isn't clear, but adding more planes to an air wing reliably increases the rate at which you can be gathered. Makes sense. 
It also creates air superiority, which is it's for spotting. As you can play the six foot intel, blah, 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 blah. It basically, I've just repeated everything I've just said. So I'm actually really glad that I didn't read the wiki first, actually. I'm glad that I tested it first before I did the wiki. Because everything I've just said to you is exactly true. So once again, if you're looking to get the intel advantage, which I'll be honest with you. Now, I've played with it and experimented with it. I'm kind of more up to the idea of making one plane on recon. I'm, all up, to, I'm up for that idea now. But everything else not. Because it seems a waste of time. It works for ships, but just like any other plane would, like adding one air superiority. If you wanted to make these planes worthwhile, they could be converted from regular fires, and they only require 100 days of research. Otherwise, they're just a complete waste of time. Well, there you go, guys. I just gave you a reason why you shouldn't make scout planes. It's a waste of time. There you go.